This is Twit. And now, it's Suntory time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't this know if we're going to get have. <laughs> through this by the top of the hour, but let's try. You got 14 minutes, dude. Uh, good luck. I know no, Yama, to... Yamazaki. I think everybody knows that as being yeah, kind yeah. of the classic so let's at, Japanese let's whiskey. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah. The original Japanese alcohol is Japanese rice wine, sake. Yeah. It goes back thousands of years, made from rice. They polish the rice to take the bran off. They brew it like sort of like beer, but not really because they use a fungus, Astragalus or azai. Now, sounds bad, but that's also how they make miso, how they make oh, okay. soy sauce. Like this is an edible fungus it's in the that air, releases man. it releases amylases into the in, to convert the rice starches into maltose and glucose. Mm. And then remember, all it's booze tasty. making is take a starch, make it into sugar, ferment it into alcohol, happiness, right? And typically, they, they, the sake process is kind of unified. It's a simple, straightforward process. It comes out about 18% alcohol. They typically lower it to 15%, although they occasionally do distill it to make another product called shochu. Mm, which I have and but, love. Yes. Yeah, great stuff. And that's yes. a low, you know, it's not a typical spirit either. They're typically 25 to 30% alcohol rather than the 40 plus, which is normal for spirits. So how did Japan get into whiskey? Well, back in the 17th century, they weren't into whiskey. They were a closed up country. They had had their challenges with the opium wars and so forth until a fellow by the name of Matthew Perry, no relation to Chander, <laughs> who was a con who was yes. a Commodore in the US Commodore Navy Perry. Show. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Showed up in 1853 with a gunship and said, let's trade right now. Uh, and so by the he brought whiskey with him at the time. Uh, and, of course, he uh, did. well to do liked it. And so by the 1860s, you start to see Western style bars opening in Japan. Uh, the earliest records I could find was one from 1871. And of course, there's translation problems here. So there was a record of importing whiskey from Ireland called cat whiskey, which is probably Burke's because it has a cat on the label from that era and whiskey from Scotland which they called deer whiskey, <laughs> which is probably Dalmore because even in the oh, 18th yeah. 70s they had the stag on the bottle but real the learning of whiskey making for japanese starts with a guy named masataka takasiru who in 1918 goes to scotland and he was from a family of sake makers and they paid to send him off to school there he actually studied at the, at the glasgow university studying chemistry with a focus on whiskey he also came to study under Joseph A. Nettleton. <laughs> That's funny because that was my minor as well. That's interesting. Yeah, Chinese study whiskey. With a focus I'm on whiskey. still studying yeah. all the time. <laughs> uh, and he interned at Longmore and Bonus and, uh, and Hazelburn. And then he married a Scottish lady in 1919, which apparently upset all the families. Her name was <laughs> Rita. And so, in, but she realized that he really wanted to bring whiskey to Japan. So she went to. Japan and her story is actually kind of cool. If you ever get a chance to tour the Nikkei distillery, their house and stuff is still there. She was all in. So in 1920, Takasura gets back to Japan. Now he's a guy with big ideas and no money. So he falls in with a fellow by the name of Shinjiro um, Tori. Uh, and this is this at this point, this guy's already very successful chemist, which at the time you bought alcohol from a chemist. He had a bunch of other lines of business. And the company was called Suntory as a play on Tori-san. Oh, how funny. I did not know that. That's great. And he, his original successful alcohol product was actually importing Portuguese wine, which the Japanese market found was too bitter. So he would sweeten it and rebottle it and called it uh, Akadama wine, which you can still buy today. Huh. But in, in 1907, it was 60% of the wine market in Japan. So this guy was doing well. And now he falls in, he gets to know Takasuru, they make a deal. And in 1923, they established the very first whiskey distillery in Japan, which is Yamazaki. And it was, and it's still there today It's between Kyoto and Osaka. Uh, that doesn't mean they're able to make whiskey. <laughs> they struggle for many years to try and make a, a drinkable whiskey. Uh, Takasura even went back to Scotland at one point to figure out what he was doing wrong. Their first production whiskey comes six years later. It's called Shirafoda, uh, uh, which is Japanese for white label, and people generally don't like it. So uh, 
they are trying to incorporate more Japanese styles and flavors into it. And one of the challenges they have is that they are trying to use local oak because Japan does have an oak tree. Aquarius crispula, also known as the water oak or Mizanara oak. Now, this if you ever get a picture of one of these trees, you'll see it's quite twisty. They're not great for making barrels with. Uh, initially, they were using 200-year-old plus trees, although the current cooperages use 100-year-old trees. Uh, they, it doesn't grow straight. It's prone to leaking. And, and they typically grow better in the far north. But otherwise, the barrel-making process is more or less the same. They char their insides uh, much the same way, although they typically have to do leak testing because of the twists in the wood. And so they will assemble a whole barrel, fill it with water, judge how it's leaking, even swap out some staves and refit it. Also, when they initially started aging in Mizanura oak, they found it tasted bad, which is, you know, he, unfortunately, uh, uh, Takasura is learning from the Scottish method. And the Scottish method showed that every few years you would take a taste and over time, the wood flavors would emerge. And what he found with Mizanura oak was that it was very strong right away. And so the presumption it would keep is just keep getting stronger. Although they later discovered that if you gave it 15 or 20 years, it actually mellowed out and became very tasty to the point where today there are Scottish whiskeys that buy a certain number of Mizanera yeah. barrels for aging. Shivas Regal it's makes a long one. Time to wait. It's a long time. And you, and again, that you, you mix barrels around, but, uh, it, it has distinct flavors that are unique to the wood. And so it, it does get around. Uh, it's interesting to see that today, I mean, a lot of distillers have been built m in much later times. They actually are started making washbacks, the big uh, barrels for doing uh, for doing sugar extraction out of uh, Mizanura oak. So after ten years of effort, uh, Takasura uh, finishes his ten year contract with Suntory and he leaves. Now. Uh, Tori's not unhappy to have him go because he's making all this money on red wine. He's trying to spend it on, and he's ending up spending on a whiskey and they're not getting good results. And Takasura had been pretty adamant that they really needed to be in better terror, like in the right locations that were more like Scotland. And that's in the far north of Japan in Hokkaido. And here they were down in Osaka, which is not a good location for it. As, as far as Takasura was concerned, you know, Tori wasn't too worried about that. So in 1934, Takasura establishes the Nikkei Distillery in Hokkaido and uh, and starts making more whiskey. So now that you've, you've got competitors, you've got Suntory and you've got Nikkei, they, you know, they had small funding, so they're trying to make whiskey. Suntory gets their first hit in 1937. So now we're coming into World War II and uh, they make a blended whiskey they just call Suntory Whiskey but it looks very much like your sort of traditional blend of whiskey. It's popular with the soldiers. Uh, demand grows as the war ends. The Americans like it uh, as they're on control of Japan at the end of the war. Uh, so Tori uh, grows massively, diversifies. They make all kinds of product. In fact, today, only a third of their products are alcohol related. They make a lot of canned beverages and, and other things. So uh, post-World War II, whiskey's hip for the 60s and the 70s, and then it fades. Uh, as the economic crisis that, that would eventually grab Japan in the late 80s, early 90s, expensive drinks become less popular, cheap drinks become more popular, and so uh, the Japanese market for whiskey kind of declines. Uh, so Tori responds to that by starting to make competition-grade whiskeys, and this is the one you've heard of, which is the Yamazaki 12-year-old. Uh, yeah, and, uh, Yamazaki, this was a totally traditional whiskey. They did everything the way the Scots did. Pure barley, pot stilled, barrel aged. They used a blend of bourbon and and, and sherry casks as well as the the uh, Japanese oak. If you can find a bottle of this stuff today, which is tough, you're talking three four hundred dollars for a twelve year old. I mean, it's good, but it ain't that good. I should also point out that the Nikkei Distillery, the sort of rival distillery from the two original partners in the '30s splitting up. They won awards even before that one. I mean, Yamazaki was a gold medal, but the Nikkei's Yoshi, which is the location of the distillery, uh, won an award in 2001. So interesting that when Yamazaki hits their, gets their hit in, in 2003, that's the same year that Lost in Translation comes out. And that's when you get 
make it Suntory time, as uh, Leo's been happily quoting all along. And uh, <laughs> and it works. The demand worldwide for Suntory whiskey goes through the roof. And oh, it's the Sun- Bill Murray effect. Yes. Suntory diversifies then. They make, uh, they make a blended whiskey called Hibiki Harmony, which also wins a ton of awards. It's considered one of the best uh, blended whiskey ever. And by the 2010s, in 2015, Suntory goes on a buying spree. They buy Jim Beam, Maker's Mark, Booker's, Baker's, Basil Hayden, Knob Creek. In Scotland, they bought Bowmore, Lafroy, Ardbeg, Glengarach, Auchentoshan. Uh, they own Canadian Club. And uh, in Ireland, uh, Connemara and Kilbegan. So they're huge, multinational. They own stuff of all over the place. They have to be one of the biggest. They're one of the, we're one of the biggest. They compete with Diageo. And of course, wow. again, only a third of the revenue from alcoholic beverages. They make money from a lot of different places. Incredible. Um, Nikkei uh, has won awards too. Their original big award back in 2001, but they won uh, in 2015 with their Nikkei Whiskey from the Barrel. Uh, they started experimenting. Um, Takasura loved the coffee still. We talked about this in the distillation, which is the continuous running still. So they still use the stills that he installed in the 1960s to make both their coffee malt and coffee grain. The grain is corn aged in bourbon cast. The malt is made from uh, barley. Although to balance the flavor in it, Nikkei had bought in Ben Nevis. We, I mentioned this in an earlier show. And they were putting a little Ben Nevis in it, uh, which brought up a bit of a scandal as whiskey was making a return in Japan. This idea that both Suntory, the biggest, was adding Bowmore to some of their and calling it Japanese whiskey. And Nikkei was adding a bit of Ben Nevis to their so-called Japanese whiskey. And so uh, uh, many other as those guys had all that success in the early aughts and now into the teens, many other distilleries have opened in Japan to make whiskey, but you always get into this battle of what is whiskey and what does it really mean? So now they're finally, as of 2021, they created a set of rules this is for the Japan spirits and liquors makers association. Uh, of course, Nikkei and Suntory directly involved in this and the rules are the spirit must be fermented, distilled, and aged in a distillery in Japan. It must contain malted grain, but it can contain other grains. It must use water from Japan. It must spend at least three years in wooden casks. Uh, it can't be distilled higher than 95%, which is incredibly high. That's vodka levels. Can't be diluted below 40% for the standard for spirit. It has to be bottled in Japan. And if it doesn't follow any, uh, if it misses out on any of these rules, not only can it not be called Japanese whiskey, it can't have any Japanese symbology in it. It can't use yes. the flag. It can't use city names. It can't use Japanese graphics. Literally, there is Hibiki a, a location in Japan. Is that where that comes from? Um, Hibiki means harmony. No. Oh, okay. So that's why it's a blended with it's their blended whiskey uh, where they combine all these things to get to yeah. a blended flavor. Right. And with the little time we have left, let me reference the whiskey that I've chosen here, which is Oishi, uh, Oishi, the whiskey sherry cask. Now, uh, this is a newer distillery, only opened in the 2000s, but they are doing, you know, if we talk about what is whiskey, whiskey is fundamentally uh, um, a grain converted to sugars, fermented into alcohol, distilled to a certain level, and aged in barrels. Oishi is actually made from rice. They use the sake method. (laughs) But then they distill it up to a high distillation level, and then they age it in first fill sherry casks. I guess it doesn't matter what it comes from, right? Exactly. And and it scores for the the Whiskey Observer scored at 92 out of 100. Wow. Wow. Like well, that, this is only eight year old too. This is not. It's, it's got no age statement on it, which means it's less than eight. Less than eight. Yeah, it's, it's below. Yeah, I gotta find yeah. this. This you can find. It's is it I good? Chat. I'm, you I like it. It's well, you're delicious. recommending it. Yeah, wow. I'm absolutely. Now again, for a no age statement whiskey, eighty dollars is a lot of money to spend on a whiskey. Ooh, yeah, that's pricey. Yeah. It's, I mean, well, seventy dollars. As long as you understand what it, I mean, but as and you it's said, a rice whiskey, which is hysterical. well, we get all the way back to the Japanese learning how to make whiskey like Scott. So, like, they know, are you making Scottish whiskey in Japan, right? Or is it is it just the barrel? Because you're using pot stills from from Scotland. 
I would argue it is the most Japanese of Japanese whiskeys. Yeah. That's what I think too. Although yeah. with the new rules as of 2021, you can't call you this call Japanese whiskey. whiskey. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But There's it does no... have a Japanese character on it. Uh, well, what it does it says now, distilled they... in Japan, so they must have changed the rules a little bit. Well, no, the packaging rules don't come in full force till next year. Oh, so they're going to have to change it. They're going to have to change it, all right? Or there's going to be tweaks of rules. Or they're going to add, the only real thing they're not complying with right now is having a little malted grain in it. So instead of, if you just added a certain oh, just a little bit would grain do it. Oh, okay. to be compliant. Okay. But I would say this is the most Japanese whiskey. Right. It is made with Japanese should, tactics. They should make a case for changing the rules. Yeah. I, they, well, and of course, who's changing, who's fighting for these new rules? Suntory the, time. The, <laughs> in, the incumbents, exactly. The ones it's that a classic got antitrust problem. <laughs> Damn those companies. Oh, he's in a Japanese form. O-H-I-S-H-I. If you can find it, 80 bucks, yep. thereabouts. The, it's easier to find Hibiki Harmony. And it's about, again, $80 for a blend is outrageously expensive, but Japanese whiskey tends to be expensive. Yeah. Very tasty. One world's best blended whiskey for many years in a row. Nice. It's a classic Suntory. Uh, you can't go wrong. I wouldn't bother trying to hunt down Yamazaki 12. You'll make yourself crazy. Somebody gave me right. a bottle, and I think I still have it. So I'm now going to treat it with the... It's Respect very special. It deserves. Yeah. I think it's yeah, time to yeah. do an in-studio show. You yeah. Know, so there you go. I seem to remember that happened a few years ago. Mm, yeah, a, quite a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> and then some, yeah. some Abelor got in, uh, Abunda might, got involved. Might, might and have been there was involved as well. Yes, mm -hmm. there was trouble for sure. And Mary Jo <laughs> was really the instigator. And since she's not here to defend herself, we're sticking with that story. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Richard right. Campbell, runasradio.com, .net rocks. Rich Campbell on Twitter. Thank you for that. Uh, enlightening conversation every time you do this it makes me want to drink <laughs> i am gonna drink i'll just lay it on the table uh, la yeah last week's show i referenced woodford reserve is a very unusual american bourbon and shortly after that i got a picture from paul saying i blame you uh, <laughs> yeah. and you know True. you might not know this but hot dogs and whiskey excellent pairing uh, excellent i also you know I, I meant to text richard a second time to tell you something my wife told me which was that we tend to, we often will buy like a cheaper, like a Canadian club, something, whatever mm -hmm. for, um, mm -hmm. for cocktails and stuff. But when you put a good whiskey, a bourbon into a cocktail, yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah. You can tell the difference for sure. You're an expensive I mean, oh, that's interesting. Oh, no, <laughs> so very don't, much so. don't use cheap whiskeys. In other words. Well, no, no, I, 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 first of all, use good save a lot of money. Yeah. It, the, what you don't do is do a side-by-side -side taste test because then you'll find yourself spending three times as much oh, because yeah. a good bourbon whiskey will... Well, especially with an old-fashioned or something like that where whiskey yeah, is the yeah, predominant. You'll you, know. tell, you can tell the difference between a $20 bottle and a $70 yeah. bottle in a cocktail. You, you can really use can. anything yeah. you want. $400 bottle. Iced tea, but in an old-fashioned... Maybe yeah. you should use good whiskey. A little bit nicer. hundred percent. Yeah. Sense. But <laughs> it's a huge There's problem. nice. It gets up to a point where it's like, are you really putting mixer in that $400 bottle of whiskey? Yeah, no, exactly. Why not just drink that. it straight and uh, save the middle? Man. Yeah. There's always a line, you know, yeah. but, I, but, but a more expensive whiskey bourbon makes a difference. No doubt about yeah. it. Nice to know. Absolutely. And I, I am an expensive habit. I found in general, my relationship with spouses goes one of two ways. It's either stay away from that guy. He costs <laughs> yes, us a lot of money. Right, or we need or, to see him more. Yeah. Or exactly. yeah, don't buy yeah. anything till you talk to him because he gets us the good stuff. Yeah. That's what Lisa right, well, tells me. Yeah. So I have a good spouse. <laughs> Paul, Richard, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you. You too. And uh, we'll back. see you uh, next time on Windows Weekly. And I have only one thing to say now. For relaxing times, make it some Tory time. Kato, 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 kato.